Mike, of course, has been so generous to stick around for uh, an extra segment because I ran my mouth so long uh, talking. It went so fast. Talking to him is always so enjoyable. Uh, and it was even more enjoyable today that we just kept talking. Or I kept talking. Uh, but I didn't talk about some of the things that I wanted to. First of which, though, the Big Ten going to 15 teams in the tournament next year. That means three people, bye-bye, sitting at home. And that's going to be, um, depending on who that is, woo, the first time not getting to play in the Big Ten tournament. That's going to really stink. That'll really put an exclamation point on your season. Yeah, I mean, first off, it, it's not official uh, that that's what they're going to do. Um, that was reported last week. I think John Rothstein from CBS reported that. Uh, it's not been confirmed by the league. Uh, but his the, the to me, the, uh, the more important element of that report, assuming it's true, is the uh, affirmation that they will play 20 conference games rather than advance to 22, which had been discussed. I know it was discussed or, uh, and for, you know, I, I have not followed up on what John wrote, but I know it was discussed to go to 22 and I was never in favor of that. That would be so bad for the conference. I think I believe it would hurt the conference, uh, in, in, in the, in the NCAA in tournament environment, in that world, it would not be a good thing to, for the league to go to 22 games. I know it minimizes somewhat the uh, the attachment between uh, the uh, league members. Uh, you would only get uh, with with the number of teams they have and 20 games. I think you get three two plays in there, but that's the decision you made when you decided to go to 18 members. Uh, that's that's the choice you made, and so uh, you 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 don't want to in, to reduce the number of occasions on which the league can assert its value on the inter intra conference stage, because uh, if you don't if you don't get those opportunities to play other leagues, how do you how how do how do people decide what you are as an NCAA tournament team? Uh, or, or, or how many, how many teams you get uh, into the tournament based on what? Over the last four years, it was it would have been ten in 2020. Then it was nine, and was nine, and was eight, and nearly nine. So the league was doing something right in that in that in that stretch. And what it was doing was it was going out, it was putting together highly a a, a vast array of highly capable basketball teams. And then going out and beating teams from other conferences. That's how it was. That's how it got all those bids. And if you limited the number of opportunities to go out and beat uh, teams from other conferences, all you're doing is beating up on yourself for 22 games a year. And I, you know, I I don't think that that helps you competitively. And when you're adding the number of teams that they are, you're adding four more teams, so you're already getting more inventory for the various network partners, whether it's Fox or uh, Peacock or BTN or whomever, uh, you're already getting more inventory than you already had based on adding UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington. So you don't need to go to 22 games to increase the inventory load. You're already doing that as it is. Uh, Indiana tonight at home against the Iowa Hawkeyes at 7 p.m. at the Simon Scott Assembly Hall. And a game, it goes without saying, that's a must win for Indiana. There's no game that's not a must win on the remaining of their schedule. Uh, but uh, the Hawkeyes are not the Hawkeyes of the last few years. They're just not quite as strong. Not, I'm not saying that they're a bad team, but they're just not quite as stiff as they have been uh but this will probably still be a formidable task because they're going to push indiana up and down the floor yeah i mean they they had pros uh over the last several years the murray brothers uh luca garza they, they had legit pros uh on those teams and this team may not have them uh but they have uh, ben Cricky is a terrific player, transfer from Valpo. <clears throat> excuse me. Tony Perkins has played really well lately, their, their guard. 
playing um, more in command of the ball over the last few games, and I think it's helped him become more effective. Peyton Sanford <clears throat> had an amazing game on Saturday. Uh, second half had 21 points. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and then Owen Freeman's one, one of the best freshmen in the league, if not the best freshman in the league. So there's a lot going on there. Uh, they still score at a really high level, and they still, uh, uh, you know, they're fun to watch because of that. What is going to be Indiana has uh, had problems finding scoring outside of Malik Renu and Kalel Ware, and they've been without Kalel Ware here of late. Malik Renu obviously uh, carrying the bulk of the load. Indiana is going to have to find scoring elsewhere. We I don't know if uh, Kalel Ware will be ready for tonight or not. I'm sure he'll be listed as questionable. Uh, and a lot of rumors about him packing it in. Oh, for the was, season, by the way, yeah, and I'm and know, I'm like, I was so I was like, oh, that's a bunch of crap. I I'm go, so you guys tired gotta of these stop kinds of that. rumors, Jim. You know, I, last summer, Facebook, when, Facebook, Facebook, Facebook is just the nonsense. death of people. Last summer, okay, uh, when Aaron Bradshaw was inactive uh, because he had a, he 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 had a foot problem, and there were people on the internet saying that he would never play for Kentucky because his agent just wanted to sign there for the glory, and then he would sit the whole year, and and he would never play, okay? So, you know, July goes by, or August, when they went to the Bahamas, doesn't play. Uh, September, not practicing. October, he's not, and the season starts, he's not playing. You know why? Because he had a foot problem. And you know what? He doesn't have a foot problem now. And where is he, Jim? Is he on the floor? I am so sick of this stuff. We shouldn't give it. We shouldn't give it air. We really shouldn't because it's just nonsense. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I saw that. I, I've seen that so many times that players that players are just going to shut it down uh, because to protect their draft stock. Players play. If they can't play, they get frustrated and can't play, but they're frustrated. And, and it does them no good to sit. Play. And sitting does them no good. Uh, it, it's it's yeah. I, uh, I I laughed at it, but I, I I gave it no more credence, and I have just ignored that crap because it's just so dumb. Other than mentioning here, Khalil, uh, Khalil Khalil is not a prominent NBA prospect right now. He he has a possible NBA future in part because he played and dispelled dispelled a lot of concerns about him that were there because of how he played a year ago. But it's not like the NBA guys are lining up him up to take in the lottery. Uh, now, it, there is it is a really weak draft, so you can say to yourself, well, maybe I can take advantage of that. But if that's the goal, then the best way to make that happen is to play and play well. It's, it's really the only way it's going to happen. He's gotta, I agree. He's, he's got to play well. They take on the Iowa Hawkeyes tonight, and uh, Indiana has to slow their their uh, up tempo game down and do what they want to yes. do. Indiana yeah. needs to dictate their have, impose their will. Uh, but that is hard to do, Jim, for a couple of reasons. One, I was really good at pushing the pace, and two, the way Iowa allows you to play invites you to play at a quicker pace. It, it, it's it's fun to play basketball like Iowa plays it. And the teams that get in the arena with them, they've been a, in, a, in a few uh, UFC cage matches, and they say, hey, <laughs> we're going to get the hoop tonight. And they, it's kind of hard to not buy into that. But if you if you do it, you've got to do it well. Uh, you've got and, – and, and the honest truth is that Indiana is a really interesting test case for this because they just went through a game in which they played – a high-level team on the road did not make a single three and nearly won the game. So how does it go now when they play a team that is really, uh, in terms of its form, much different? Uh, they're built differently at Iowa, and they play differently at Iowa. Illinois is one of the toughest teams in the country to play against because they've got length at every position. and it, it, They have high-end length at every position. Even the, their, their, their four or five, Coleman Hawkins, is super long for a big guy. 
so that's hard. They're hard to play against. They're hard to get good looks. They're hard to get penetration. Indiana hung in there. Uh, they're doing a lot of hanging in there and not as much winning. Uh, but I, I still believe that there are a couple of players away from being a very capable team, a, a very effective team. And some of that obviously involves keeping the players you have or a, a large segment of the players you have. And then you add Liam McNeely to that. And uh, obviously they're going to need to find a point guard uh, somewhere, whether it's uh, in a high school class or a transfer portal, they're going to need to find a, a point guard who can really play. There are two guards away from being extraordinarily great. A uh, good. Well, I, you know, uh, I mean, like, I don't know what Trey's thoughts are. I've never talked to him. I don't know if you have, but I mean, he's got another year available to him if he wants it. Indiana's and, two gu two guards away from being. No, really no, no, good. no. I, I, you don't look. If you if if you bring in a shooter like McNeely and the point guard can shoot, it's okay that Trey's not great at that. And remember, his numbers are down because he's. Because there's no one, there's no one, there's no uh, Miller cop who can really shoot. Yeah, when, but he's shooting forty percent from the free throw line. I understand that, but he shot forty percent from the three point line last year when the attempts were low. He, he, the guys get into funks. He's he's a really good player. Um, I would, if I were Indiana, I would very much want him back next year as a fifth year guy if he were willing. Oh, absolutely, but I think he's much better. Coming off the bench, I I think that if he's starting, that you're still not quite to the level you need to be talent wise. Uh, and I don't mean to be disparaging. Well, I mean, no, I, 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 I'll push back player. on that. First of all, the point guard has to be talented. Um, and I and I and, don't know whether that's really smart. available or will be available. I don't know because we don't know what the portal is going to look like. Um, so there's so the, the point. I, I am assuming in that scenario, if he's a starter, that the point guard is really good. And then you add in, you, you keep Mbako and you add in McNeely and you keep Renu and hopefully you keep uh, Khalil Ware. And that's a team. And I, I don't have any problem with starting, uh, starting Trey Galloway on that team. If the point guard is, 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 I, I don't need him to be like electric. But he's got to be—he he's got to be able to pass. He's got to be able to shoot. He's got to be able to do those two things more than anything. And if you go out on the transfer portal and you have choices and you prioritize defense and quickness, I think that's a mistake. You got plenty of both of those. Now, if you can get it and the other stuff, cool. But priority: got to be able to pass and got to be able to shoot. Those are the two things. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of the same problems on this team. As you do on this team now, you just might be better at it. You might be, uh, you know, because everybody's more experienced.